Howdy guys, welcome back to BRG Photography. This is Ben, and this is a video that I've wanted to make for a while, and we're gonna be talking all about hair and how to retouch it. So taking an image like this, which looks nice, but the hair is a little out of control, you could say, and we're gonna retouch it and correct it and make it look like this, so the hair is a lot more manageable, but still looks very realistic. So if you wanna see how I do it, stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome back. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. So the main concept with this uh, technique is we are going to be erasing the current hair edge and then replacing it with one of our own that we're going to manually paint in. So what does that mean? So if we zoom in a little bit here, uh, you'll see the hair is just kind of all over the place, especially at the edges, right? It's messy. We have little hair strands coming out everywhere. And previously, I might make a new layer. Uh, switch to my in-painting brush tool, set to current layer and below, you know, and just start painting out these strands of hair. Now, for strands that come straight out into the background like this, not really a problem, but when you've got a lot of little hairs like this, it's just too long of a process to come over here and just try to do that. Now a lot of times I will take care of some of the big ones that come out from the uh, head. Uh, this is going to make our next step a little bit easier, but you can't do this for everything. It would just take way too long and is really inefficient. So I found a better way to kind of do this and that's just basically going to be erasing all of this and then replacing it with our own. So let me just go ahead and grab a last few of these little ones that really stick out. And again, this is going to make the next step a little bit easier if I just can grab some of these ones that are really sticking out into the background. And this also works well because we have a solid gray backdrop, but like that. Okay, so that's okay. Perfect. And then up here, I wanted to grab a few. Now, actually, before I start this next step, there's another thing I like to do, too. And for example, this is obviously natural, this gap in the hair, but just to kind of create more volume, I'm going to switch to a clone stamp tool and let's do something about 20 percent flow and just a sample from right here and just add in, fill in that gap. Just it adds a little bit more volume. There's a small gap here that we could fill into. And that little bit just kind of adds a bit more volume to the hair. And then here sometimes at the part, I'll also do the same thing. This time I'm going to do a slower flow, 10%. And I just kind of like to make the part a little less um, pronounced, I guess. So just kind of darkening it up a little bit. Just so the part isn't so um, kind of just visible. Something like that. Right, and if we look zoom out, it makes a little bit of a difference. Okay, on to the main bit. Now, let's go ahead and start over here. Now, using that same clone stamp tool, I'm gonna grab a 20% flow brush. And uh, you may have noticed my layout's a little bit different than usual. I'm kind of playing around with having tools in different positions. That way I just have more room for my layers and brushes on the right. And I have my macros and histogram and other information on the left. All right, so just, Starting from somewhere near the hair, I am just going to start painting. And we're still on that previous layer that we just created earlier. And I'm going to go right up to the edge, like really up to the edge here. Because what I'm doing is I want to get a clean edge so that when I paint in my own hairs, I have a lot of control. Now, here's another issue that you see sometimes where we have these hairs just kind of going across, kind of against the grain in a sense. You can do the same thing that we did earlier. I'm going to clone stamp maybe right here and then just kind of get rid of those. I'm not going to do too many for this video, but you get the idea. This is something that you can spend uh, a lot more time on to get it looking perfect. But sometimes these little hairs that are kind of jutting, you know, across the other hairs, they do kind of stand out. So just by kind of getting rid of them with some simple like clone stamping or in painting, whatever works, just kind of helps, um, helps, look, helps it look a little better, you could say. All right, back to our normal clone stamping here. And I'm going to go again right up to the edge here and actually give myself a pretty hard edge. 
And here we are down here. Maybe I'll switch to my in painting brush tool and just grab that little hair that's sticking out. And then clone stamp here. I try to stay as close to the hair as I can because if I was to say sample from out here and then start painting, it's subtle, but you can kind of see that the gray is different. It's not the same gray. There's a little bit of a gradation. So by staying close to the hair and then also having a soft brush helps, you can always kind of you know fix it if you feel it's a little bit off. Okay, so let's go ahead and just grab this big chunk here. Now, honestly, I don't like all this clumpiness right around here, so I'm just gonna get rid of all of it. I'm just gonna go ahead and just erase all of this. I know it might seem a bit extreme, but I think just by getting rid of it, it just gives me a lot more control at the end. And, you know, we're working on a separate layer, so I can bring it back if I want to. So I'm gonna really be aggressive here and just grab a lot of this. Try to keep a little bit of a shape where the hair is kind of curling around, but this I'm just getting rid of. And let's see, do I wanna keep that or not keep it? Let me see, let me go ahead and get rid of it once and just see what it looks like. Okay, I think I prefer that. Uh, both look okay, but I think what we're going to be doing, um, it might be a little better just to have it gone. So let's just have that gone. Alrighty, so this side's pretty much done. I can come over here and really clean this up more if I want to, but you get the idea. Now on the other side, I'm gonna do a different technique, which is a little faster, uh, but only really works if you have like a solid, you know, background like we do here in the studio. So let me just clean up these last little bits right here. Now on the other side, we're gonna do a different technique. And in this way, or for this way, I'm going to go ahead and reselect my background layer. I'm gonna grab a lasso tool here, and I'm gonna just select the area just outside of those little hairs, and that's why we got rid of some of those ones earlier. It doesn't have to be too precise, just basically in the general area. And then let's go ahead and just kind of grab something like this. And now we have this little selection here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna hit Command J on a Mac or Control J on a PC to duplicate that layer. Then I'm gonna deselect it with Command D or Control D. And I should have just uh, this, I'm holding down Option on a Mac to just um, kind of solo that layer. And so with that layer selected, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my Move tool and I'm just going to move it over. Now actually what I should do is I should put this on top of that previous layer, there we go. And I'm gonna just move it over just kind of where it's covering up the hair, like so. And then here we can see that it's a little bit not blended very well, but that's fine. We can easily correct that by grabbing our clone stamp tool. Let's do something like a 5% flow, just kind of sample from maybe in here and just kind of blend this in so that it looks okay. Same thing, uh, it's actually maybe there's a little bit here that could be blended better, but you get the idea, you know what I'm doing, so. All right, now, with that layer selected, we are going to create a mask, and we are gonna have that mask selected, and we're gonna grab a paintbrush. I'm gonna do 100% opacity, 100% flow, 56% hardness is fine and we are gonna paint with black. And let's go ahead and make our brush a bit bigger. And first thing, I'm gonna just paint all that back in. I'm just gonna paint all of that back in, and you'll notice the color is a little bit different, but that's fine. And now I'm gonna to switch to a white color, and now let's zoom in a little bit. And now I want to, let's go ahead and paint the rest of that back in. Now with my white, I can come over here and basically erase and again, like we did before, create a brand new hair edge. Something that's gonna be clean and sharp. And this is where I can get rid of all these kind of want unwanted areas. You know, do I like that hair? Or maybe it might be kind of cool if it kind of comes in and comes out like that. Uh, that little hair is left over from the previous layer, but we can fix that later. 
and maybe just do something like this. Clean up these edges here. Yeah. Something like that. That looks cool. And then if we wanted to, we can do the same thing kind of up here. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and make a brand new layer and then just clean up some of these little remaining uh, strands of hair. So for example, this one here. And you know, here's a bit messy. I don't really like this. So switching to a clone stamp tool, I'm just gonna take these hairs off the chest area. And then here, it's like I missed a few things. I can come up here and maybe just go back to my clone stamp tool and get rid of this. Okay, just wanted to clean up a little bit more and I think that looks pretty good. So on to our next main step, which is going to be painting in the hairs individually manually painting in our own hairs sounds like a lot of work but actually it's not too bad okay so now we have this clean edge here and as you can see we removed all of that and we lost a little bit of volume in the hair but that's okay because we're going to bring it back alrighty so let's go ahead and make a brand new layer and let's just call this one hair and let's start painting in some hairs. So in order to do this, we're actually gonna make a new brush. So if you come up here to this little hamburger menu, we're gonna come down here and hit new round brush, and that should bring up a new brush. And let's double click on that to bring up the brush editor. And we're gonna change a few of these settings. So the first one is size. Um, kind of through experience, I've realized that usually one pixel is about the good size of a hair. So if I go ahead and turn off these other layers here and let's zoom in you can see that you know that's about the size of or the width of a strand of hair now of course this will depend on the resolution of your image and how big the in the frame the picture is but for this size image uh, one pixel is about the size of a hair okay now the next one I want to look at is accumulation. Now basically accumulation acts as opacity for the brushes here. So if we have accumulation set to 100, it's just one big thick line. Now if you look closely, hair is not totally opaque. It becomes opaque when it kind of clumps up and overlaps itself, but when it's by itself, it's actually a bit translucent and you can see kind of light passes through it. So if I were to drop the accumulation down to say 50% and then do another line, that looks a lot closer to how hair looks. And especially when hair overlaps itself, like let's see if we can find something like maybe here, it might be hard to see, but you can see like where right here, where the hairs overlap, they kind of, they become a bit darker just because they're translucent and as they overlap themselves, it becomes more and more opaque. And so by doing a lower uh, accumulation, we can kind of simulate that effect by when these hairs cross, you can see that it does get a little bit darker where they overlap. And that just gives a little bit more natural uh, look to the hairs. So we're gonna do our accumulation around 50. You can play around with this depending on the color of the hair as well. Uh, 50, 60, 70% might be good. We'll just do some around here for now. Hardness at this size, like 100% hardness or 0% hardness doesn't make any real difference. So you can have that whatever way you want. And the rest of the settings we're gonna keep as is. Now in dynamics, we're gonna keep these all off for now, but there are a few little things I wanna show you later that can really help the hair uh, look a bit more real. So let's go ahead and close that. And let's go ahead and turn these back on. And on that top layer, let's start painting in some hair. So I'm gonna show you a few techniques to have how we can do this. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the whole thing. But just like you would imagine, we're gonna just pick a spot. We can hold down the option key as we click down to bring up our color picker so we can kind of sample from an area here and then we can just start painting in some hairs now you want to be careful you make sure you want, you want to make sure you're starting from within inside the head and not starting like here or you know doing something like that that looks a bit unnatural and we're just going to start painting in a lot of hairs if you have a stroke you don't like just undo that every once in a while resampling from a different spot picking a different color and drawing in hairs like that. You can see here where these hairs kind of get cut off. We can kind of try our best to recreate that. 
let's sample from a color say around here and just kind of like imagine you know where these hairs are going pick a different color come here let's go ahead and zoom out to 100 percent i'm going to do control one or uh, sorry command one on the mac control one to bring my image to 100 percent and just do something like this maybe grab a darker color down here and come like that maybe grab a lighter color here and just paint here now we can do this a lot uh, another technique we can do is we can switch to a clone stamp tool, make sure we are set to current layer and below, and we can actually use that same brush that we just made. Um, actually, we can too. We can name this brush. If we right click on this, we can go to rename brush, and I'm going to call this one hair two. And now we have this little hair brush, and we can maybe, for example, clone stamp this area here and just kind of maybe make the brush a little bit bigger sample from down here and then we can kind of help we can kind of thicken this area up by basically clone stamping the edge to kind of hide that like um that really fine seam that we kind of made when we deleted all this i'm going to resample from down here and you can see by doing things like this i can kind of help hide that little edge that we created but still give a little bit of a natural look to the hair now i'm going to go back to my brush here sample from a color around here and just start drawing in some hairs maybe pick a darker color draw in some hairs now what's interesting and what's important about this is you want to don't make the hairs look too perfect hair kind of does things like that and that looks natural if we have all the hairs just going straight it's going to look a little bit unnatural but every once in a while if we kind of create our own flyaway something like that you know that's going to help sell the effect that this is real and hasn't been retouched if we every once in a while just have one like stray hair going off in a random direction. Now, one thing that you can also help to make your hair strands look a bit more real and to do it faster is I notice that if I start doing lots of strands really, really fast on my tablet, of course, you can notice that some of these strokes, I have little fish hooks at the end. And that's just because I'm painting down and I'm quickly bringing my hand back up, but I'm not releasing fast enough so I get this little hook at the end. To uh, prevent that, you can turn the stabilizer on. And the stabilizer, what it's gonna do, I'm gonna make the tail really long so you can see, is it creates a little tail behind your brush. So if I were to stop even though I was to like, come all the way up, I'm still have the mouse clicked down or I have the pin clicked down. It's not painting anything. Not until that tail moves does it start painting. So with this tail, let's make it a bit shorter. I can start doing those fast strokes again, but you notice I don't have those little fish hooks anymore. So that really helps with preventing these kind of weird little effects that can happen if you are using a tablet and doing really fast strokes. Another tip that I like is to rotate the canvas so that it's more comfortable for you. So right now, I'm having to go from top to bottom and I can do these pretty well if I do a lot of them like this. But it's a lot easier for my hand to move from about, I've noticed kind of diagonally right to diagonal down left. And to do that, we can rotate the canvas by either rotating it left or right. Now I have these set to my comma and period key. So on my keyboard, I can do comma or period to kind of rotate the canvas. And now I can rotate it into a position that's really comfortable for my hand to paint in. And I'm gonna come down here and just do lots of, lots of strokes. Maybe you pick a dark color and just come in here. And again, every once in a while, just kind of do a little wild hair something like that. Now down here, I'm going to turn the stabilizer off and I'm just going to start doing some spirals because we can see the hair is kind of like curling this way, right? So I'm trying to, you know, simulate what the hair would be doing in real life had we not cut it off. And we're going to have, you know, a hair that's just going to come out like that or something. And we're going to just do some hairs this way. And down here, let's go ahead and rotate the canvas a little bit. Down here, we're just gonna have a big clump of hair. So I'm just going to basically almost like scribble. I'm just kind of right now scribbling like up and down. I'm scribbling, maybe grab a darker color, scribble a little bit more, maybe try to grab a lighter color, scribble, 
do a few hairs that are kind of going Remember, hair crisscrosses especially when you have long hair like this it's going to crisscross in different directions so by the more i guess i would say the more imperfections you add it actually helps to sell it as being more real so something like this right let's come down here and do a few like big strokes something like that now of course we spent all this time erasing all these flyaways and why are we just putting them back in because these are flyaways that we have control of these are flyaways that we drew so we have you know total control of them we can you know change the opacity if we want to we can erase certain strokes if we want to the thing is like we are in control so this is what i meant when i said we're going to basically recreate our own hair edge just play around zoom out make it kind of look real as best you can and like i said it's going to be a lot of hairs look at what we've drawn so far if i call down option to solo this uh thing you can see this is, we, we've done all this that's a lot of little brush strokes but actually it didn't really take too long if you think about it so let me see is there any little tips i can tell you i'm gonna i want to do i have a few more tips at the end so i'll tell you what what i'm gonna do right now is i'm gonna go ahead and finish this side and this side and i'll speed it up so you can just kind of watch me do the whole thing and afterwards i'm going to show you a few extra little tips All right, guys, I have finished and you can take a look at what I've done here. And as you can see, I have drawn in a bunch of hairs. And what's most important is a lot of these hairs are imperfect. And that's what's important, I think, is a lot of times I'll see people drawing the hairs too straight. But when you're drawing hair, yeah, sometimes let's grab a brush really quick. Sometimes a hair is going to go off and do something like that. And that looks real. Just that little imperfection makes us think that that's real. Having a hair come and do something kind of out like this, we feel like, okay, that's real. Because if this was edited, maybe we would have edited it out. So keeping the little imperfections and purposely drawing them back in, I think is really important to sell the effect of when we have to basically redraw hair. And sometimes with retouching, you're not limited to what's on the page. You're not limited to the pixels in the image. We can start drawing our own. There's many, many times where I've drawn things that weren't there, but if you do it in a realistic way, nobody knows. So let me show you another little cool trick to really help bump up the realism. So if we zoom in here, we can see a lot of these hairs have these really bright highlights where the backlight is hitting the hair and causing this kind of reflection. We can simulate that effect by opening up our brush editor by double clicking on it. Let's go to dynamics and at the very bottom we have something called luminosity jitter and we're going to drag this all the way to 100% and we're going to set this to cyclic and what that does is I'm going to paint you're going to see I'm going to paint a streak a uh, line down here a streak or a strand or whatever and you can see that the luminosity is basically jittering from dark to super bright in a kind of cycle right and now we have that so what we can do is we can do things like this if we can do it perfectly and time it up we got to play around a little bit but we can create our own little highlighted strands of hair and just by doing something like that like that looks real that really bumps up the realism because we would imagine that this backlight would hit that one particular hair in a really strange way now because it's cyclic you want to try to like just play around and you know undo until you find something that looks like you know really like oh that's what that like that looks cool that streak looks cool it looks like the hair is being bent maybe it works well down here where we can do like really sharp 
bends and doing things like this. Like, again, you got to play with it. So you could do the same thing here, right? Just do a few like strokes that kind of like have a little highlight coming off it like that. And just little, just little touches like that, little, little things here and there really just bump up the realism. If it's too much, you can drop the luminosity jitter down to like 42% so it doesn't jitter as much let's see maybe to play around with these settings a bit okay something like that right so it doesn't jitter as much so you get little subtle highlights as opposed to really bright white ones so little effects like that just add a little hint of realism which is really pretty cool i think it really adds to the realism now another little trick is if we zoom in a bit we can definitely see that these hairs are a bit sharp. Um, the image is sharp and everything's in focus, but if we wanted to kind of blend it in a little better, we can go to our quick effects panel. And if you don't have this here, you can go over to your window and quick effects. And it's gonna bring up a panel. At the very bottom, you have the Gaussian blur. And usually just by bumping it up to one pixel, you can see like it adds some blur. Usually one pixel is good enough. You can go on to uh, whatever fits your image. Now for this one, because the hairs are all in focus, I wanna keep it in focus, but there are definitely other images where the hair at the back is a little bit out of focus. So you can add some Gaussian blur to kind of help blend it in better with the image. So that's another effect that works really well. Now, one more thing we can do, and this is really gonna depend on, again, a lot of factors, but, Let's go ahead and double up our hair again. Let's make it really thick. So let's go ahead and press Command J on a Mac or Control J on a PC. And now the hair is a bit thicker. And this might be a little bit too thick. Now you can really see the strands are really kind of fake at this distance. Granted, this is 100% zoomed in. And when you're looking at it like this, you can't really tell. But if we wanted to blend that in a little bit better, we can do a little masking trick. So with these two layers I have now, I'm gonna merge them together. So I'm gonna go ahead and with that top layer selected, go to layer and where are you merge down okay so now i have one single layer that just has all of those hairs in there and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to hold down command on the keyboard or control on a pc and click the thumbnail and what that does is it selects that layer so it's selecting all those little hairs and then with that selection there i'm going to come down here and create a mask now let's go ahead and deselect this and it's kind of hard to tell let's zoom in a little bit here but if i turn this mask off and on you can see that it just kind of subtly faded some of the hairs together. It clumped up some of the hairs uh, together, which kind of creates that effect of hair overlapping on itself. And it just kind of makes the effect a little less harsh. So if we zoom out here, you can kind of see that the hairs just look a little bit more faded in. Now, it may not look good on every image. I think for this one in particular, um, I kind of prefer it looking thick like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and undo this mask thing here. And with these two layers, you know, maybe I can lower the opacity on one of the layers to kind of help control the amount. So this is the way I like to do it, is just by controlling the opacity of these individual layers. Maybe one layer you don't have the Gaussian blur on. You make it a bit sharp. And then with that sharper layer, we can kind of adjust the intensity to kind of get the right consistency that we like. And then, voila, there we are. So let me go ahead and put these together, turn all these off. And so we went from here, where the hair is a bit out of control, and we went to this, where the hair I think still looks pretty real, but is now under our control. So uh, I hope you guys found this video useful. I know it's probably a bit long. I think this is a kind of a cool and a very important thing because pretty much for almost every model you're gonna shoot, they're going to have hair. And especially if you don't have a stylist on set with you who can constantly keep the hair under control or many times when you're just in a rush and you're moving fast, you're just trying to shoot and get those images and it's not until later you realize, man, I really should have had that hair a bit under control. So now you can really, with confidence, hopefully, uh, retouch your hair and make it look natural. Uh, okay, guys, so I know this is probably a long one, but as always, I appreciate your comments that you leave in my videos. It really inspires me to keep making more. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. So until next time, uh, peace. All right, guys, thanks for watching.